Hello everyone and welcome back to another Batman 3rd Edition Miniature Game Battle Report. Today we have for you 350 rep of the Joker versus 350 rep of Neutral Faction. There is no official rules for any kind of Neutral Faction or Unknown Faction I guess let's go with the name since they all have Unknown on their card because they have no particular allegiance but with the lack of official objective decks being released for new crews I thought it'd be interesting to actually run an Unknown crew that still adheres to the rep limit because they're using the neutral cards. So we'll take a better look at them in a second. So this is our unknown slash neutral crew being led by Arkham Origins Deathstroke who has the stat line of a leader so I don't think that's too bad. Sidekick Scarecrow pretending to be an actual Scarecrow at the back there. Ratcatcher is a free agent with his three rat bases and then at the back they've recruited three of the Blackgate prisoners Gustav Gustafsson, Carlo Grotti and High Security Henchman to help them out with their nefarious deeds. That's what, nine miniatures I think in total, counting the rat bases, although I don't think the rat bases are going to be getting given audacity, but who knows, who knows. So yeah, they are not a legal crew, but they are all unknown affiliation. They're using the neutral deck, so let's see how they do. And this is our 350 rep of Joker being led by, well actually, it's, other than the Harlequin miniature, this is all the third edition starter set Joker crew. So we have Joker, right there but instead of Harley Quinn as his psychic he has Mr. Hammer who is overly expensive because he's a first edition miniature but he's fun free agent Deadshot and then the miscellaneous who are they're actually unknown as well they're not specifically Joker but Thugs 1 to 6 couldn't tell you which is which but Thugs 1 to 6 so that's also a 9 mini crew so audacity markers are going to be in short supply before we get deployed and everything, we have to find out what our deployment type is and also our twist for the battle. Alright, so let's see what we get. Also, this is the first battle report I'm recording with the new camera. Teething problems are likely, apologies in advance, but it's a teething process and it'll be better on the other end, I promise. So let's see what deployment type we're getting. Showdown. It's the bog standard, old fashioned, 8 inches, 8 inches, fight in the middle. The first group to be deployed must only contain models with the leader, sidekick, or free agent ranks. So as per discussion and comments a while back, because it's a bit confusing the way it's written, it just means that each side deploys all leader, sidekick, and free agent ranks first, then the other side do it, and then finally henchmen go after that. And the twist for the battle... Heavy Rain. At the start of each round, the player with initiative rolls a d6 on a 4+, so a 50-50 chance. All ranged attacks for all models roll one less die until the end of the round. That is really bad for both crews because both crews have a bit of a reliance on guns. Okay, we'll get everything set up and then we'll see what's happening and who has initiative. So here we are at deployment. Joker's crew won the right to, well, want to take initi initiative and decide whether or not they want to go first. And deployment side, they chose the far side to deny the, the unknown crew the big buildings to camp on. So the unknown crew knows over here. Now the thing about the unknown crew, um, Deathstroke's team, is that Deathstroke and Scarecrow both have undercover so they can deploy up to eight outside deployment. And Ratcatcher can spawn on, or sorry, start the game rather, on any of the sword rings. So there's barely anyone in deployment. Gustav Gustafsson, Carlo Grotti, and then Deathstroke is hiding behind the bat plane in the middle of the map here. Scarecrow is there. The high security henchman has hidden, so he can deploy up to, what, 12 away from enemies as long as they can't see him. And then Ratcatcher is over there. But for Joker's crew, if we come around this end of the table, Deadshot is up on the building, of course, without Audacity. And Mr. Hammer, Joker, some of the henchmen are here, the rest are here. Now keep in mind, because of Trickster, Joker's henchmen can kind of move Audacity around, but decided to start putting them on the table visible so that it'd be easier to understand who has it and if it's moved rather than just doing it at the point of activation and you saw who had audacity for unknown crew Scarecrow, Deathstroke, High Security Henchman and Ratcatcher so with that we are ready to jump into battle round 1 and get this battle started so to get the game started one of Joker's henchmen activated the one with the dual pistols he had audacity and he started with an 8 of Joker so he had a free manipulate so first of all he did a movement action then he did his free manipulate to put down a suspect marker. Oh, totally forgot to mention, but neither side played anything during the raise to plan phase objective cards wise. He then shot his dual pistols 
at Ratcatcher who exerted one effort to use his Sewer Swarm rule, which does a few different things, but essentially it does the Bodyguard rule, so you can select a Rat Swarm within four to take the hit form. It did, it did two blood, two stun. Rat Swarms have two endurance, and so that Rat Swarm has been obliterated. So thank goodness for the zoom on this camera, because it's an awkward angle. Ratcatcher activated for the unknown crew, and rather than seek revenge, he instead, with Audacity, did a movement action to where you can see him, and then did a manipulate to put down a suspect marker hidden deep within the back of that building that's very awkward to get a shot at. But there was a reason for doing that, and that is because... The card, Stake Your Claim, has been scored for one victory point. Place a suspect marker within an enemy deployment zone. Enemy deployment zone is 8 inches in. Big line, he's within 8, so it has scored. And that's all he did, didn't do anything else, so it's back over to Joker's crew. So we're over to this end of the table for Joker's next activation. However, a correction or an omission from recording. When the dual pistol wielding henchman took out one of the rat swarms, even though he was aiming for rat catcher, he actually triggered dirty job because he killed the rat swarm. He wouldn't have killed rat catcher if the full damage had gone through, but he killed the rat swarm, so making any model KO or a casualty, that one victory point was actually scored in that last activation. So just getting that on camera, it has been scored for Joker's crew. Now the actual activation was the lazy clown with the shotgun who activated with Audacity. And this is the fun part with having so many people with undercover or hidden. It means that the action starts right away. So he moved, then he did his shotgun shot, which is expansive, so you just roll to hit against them, as far as I can tell, with the firearm roll. It's not clear on how expansive shotguns work, because technically you would lose both dice, but the expansive rule says you don't use your rate of fire, you use the template. Eh. Either way, Scarecrow and the High Security Henchman both got hit once, so that is one blood, one stun each. So High Security Henchman decided to activate to get a little bit of revenge, he activated with Audacity, so he did a movement action to get into base to base with the Lazy Shotgun Clown, and he attacked him. Now the Lazy Shotgun Clown exerted one effort, because that takes away an attack die, and that meant even if maximum damage went through at that point, assuming no efforts done in return, he wouldn't die, and that's exactly what happened. Three attacks left, three got through for three blood damage, and the one stun he did to himself for effort, so he didn't die, he's got one health left, but it did, however, let me zoom back out, trigger a, a, a quite a difficult card to trigger, Overdrive for the Unknown Faction for two victory points. When an enemy model makes an effort to defend itself against your model's attacks, don't declare an effort for your model. In other words, don't try and put the attack dice back in that they force you to lose. So that has been scored. He's still alive on one health though, and it's back over to Joker's crew. Oh, this combat down here got messy. However, first have to mention, totally forgot about the heavy rain criteria. Should have rolled at the start of the game, didn't. So instead of doing it midway through, because gunshots have already happened and it might have made a difference, just going to say that 100% for sure in battle round two, heavy rain will be in effect. So keep that in mind. So going forward, the thug with the chainsaw activated. Now you might remember he did not have audacity, but Joker via Chaos Agent gives everyone with the henchman rank trickster. So, Chainsaw Man was here, he activated, he took the Audacity Marker from Joker, giving him the Audacity, so he did a move, then with his Chainsaw he did an attack against High Security Henchman, who used two effort to try and take dice away, two effort was used to put them back, three hits got through, that is nine blood, High Security Henchman is a very dead. No cards triggered by that death, but that is pretty nasty, and very, very sneaky. So anyway, back over to the unknown crew. So Scarecrow activated next up with Audacity, which was not moved with him. Where he was next to there, uh, he used his Fear Gas Spray, of which he can do three times. That's how, that's the kind of range for third edition, just in case you're curious. Fear Gas caught both these guys. It only does one blood, although that is enough to have killed the lazy clown with the shotgun, so he is gone. And more importantly than that, it also does Terror 2. Terror lowers, well it does terror and then the value is 2. So it does a bunch of stuff including reduces the number of actions he can do next activation, so essentially he's missing a turn. Um, well technically he could get audacity and still move or attack I suppose. Lowers his effort by 2 for his next activation and it does something else as well that I can't remember offhand. Scarecrow then did a move action and has ended within 1 but not in base to base because his sight has reach so if need be he can attack this guy. Whereas this guy needs to get in contact with him, because the chainsaw does not have reach. No cards triggered by the death of that henchman, but a little bit of payback for high security henchman has been achieved. 
And with that, it is back over to Joker's crew. So next up was Mr. Hammer who activated with Audacity. He did a move action over to his team's own suspect marker and revealed it in order to convert it into loot. So again, lots of text, but we know what this is. He's now holding loot, so this card is just in play if he's still alive and holding it, or one of the Joker's crew is still alive and holding it by the end of the game. It scores for three. So long term, could be the difference maker, because I don't think there's any objective cards worth more than three offhand. I don't think there is. So that's all he did, though. And with that, bang over to the Unknown crew. Real quick activation for the Unknown crew next. Carlo Grotti activated. He didn't have Audacity, so he just did a move action, but he did start. He started within eight of Deathstroke, because he had a free manipulate, which he used to place the suspect marker right there. That's all he did. Two more quick activations. The Joker henchman with the axe, the fire axe, activated within eight of Joker. It was right next to him. So he had a free manipulate. So he did the move action, then manipulated to place a suspect marker right there. And then for the, um, the unknown crew, Gustav Gustafsson activated without audacity. He was not within eight of dead death stroke, rather. So he just did a move action up to the wall, so he's getting a little bit of cover. That's all he could do. Um, so now it's either dead shot, Joker, the large henchman next to him, or the drug addict henchman down here. And they, well, or the rat swarms, but they're mostly just there to take. Oh no, sorry, rat swarms are unknown crew. Um, yeah, death stroke still has to go. The rat swarms still have to go, and that's it for their crew. So we're getting a good idea of how large crews cope with 3rd edition because you only have 4 dis audacity markers and that means there's a lot of people who just get to do one thing so we're going to cover like 4 activations here because there was nothing to be done. So um, in no particular order just because we're here, this henchman moved up, Joker moved up, both rat swarms went round the corner there to protect rat catcher to be within bodyguard range. Uh, the drug addict henchman moved up and it's back over to the unknown crew. Now the thing, the important thing to remember is Deathstroke hasn't activated and he has Audacity and that's going to be the final activation for that crew. But then Deadshot has waited patiently without Audacity to have his turn and he's going to go after Deathstroke. So if Deathstroke tries to hunt down anyone over here, chances are he's going to get shot. So let's see what happens. So decisions have been made and activations have been carried out. Deathstroke did a move action. He had audacity. Then he did a manipulate to place down a suspect marker. He is right on the corner of the building, so he gets cover. If it, in fact, well, yeah, it's half his base is visible, so technically dead shot could have tried maybe, but instead, dead shot without audacity just did a movement action to give himself better positioning over the kind of the square here to take shots. So that is the end of battle round one. We're going into the cleanup to see if any post turn cards score. Everybody who is wounded with stun damage heals one stun as well. So as we prepare to go into battle round 2, it will be the unknown crew getting first activation this time. And for end of plan scoring, or end of phase scoring, stick to the plan has been scored by the unknown crew. You have more suspect markers in play than your opponent. Deathstroke put, put one down, Carlo put one down, and way back at the start of the turn, Ratcatcher put one down. And there's only currently one on the table for Joker's crew because one got absorbed and turned into loot. Not even sure if that still would count to Vitaly or not, but either, even if it did, it's still 3 versus 2, not 3 versus 1. That has scored. Now we're going into battle round 2. Everyone's healed one stun who had it, with Deathstroke trying to bring this back. So as things got started in battle round 2, there was actually a raise the plan phase card played by Joker. A friendly model with the leader psychic of free agent rank suffers damage from an enemy action during this round. It is in play. It's called Let's Dance, so it's just in play for the round. So in other words, this scores if Joker, Mr. Hammer, or Deadshot get hurt. For this round only. We'll see if it happens. So that is in play along with the loot, currently, for, for Joker down there. And first activation of the round, though, was Deathstroke. Activated with Audacity, did a move action over here, used his katana on poor Mr... Poor Mr. Chainsaw, and did you know just just did ten blood damage. It's nothing fancy, which in turn triggered they must know pain for inflicting at least six damage. Mr. Chainsaw, he is gone. Thank goodness he didn't have audacity this time, I guess. Oh, they stole it last time, didn't he? So good way to start the round. Over to Joker's crew. Deadshot was next up. He activated with audacity, so he could use a special action to use rapid fire for plus one attack dice. He also has expert sure, so he's plus one to his attack dice when rolling for ranged. And he shot 
remember he ignores night because he has night vision. He shot down the field at Gustav Gustafsson, who was in cover, but it didn't matter. He did six blood, three stun. Poor Gustav has been knocked over. And that does also mean that catch a bullet has been triggered for Joker's crew. Inflict at least six damage of any type with a single range attack. It's scored. Back over to Deathstroke's crew. So Scarecrow activated with Audacity. He moved back to the suspect marker that was behind him that Deathstroke put down at the end of the last turn and turned it into loot. Valuable commodities is now in play for both crews. Scarecrow is holding loot. Mr. Hammer is holding loot. He didn't do anything else. And with that, back over to Joker's crew. So the poor drug addict henchman without audacity and not within range of Joker activated and all he did was manipulate to put down a suspect marker except it wasn't a suspect marker at all, it was a stinky fish. So he did, it doesn't look fresh, that just means that this is a suspect marker that's also a stinky fish. If it survives to the end of a turn, score two points. If anyone reveals it to remove it, they get poisoned. However, I don't think that's going to happen because Scarecrow and Deathstroke have both activated. No one else is left that can get close. So that's almost a guaranteed score for Joker at the end of the turn there. So this is going to be a very odd angle to try and get, but Ratcatcher activated with Audacity and he moved around the building here, right into the back of the deployment zone. He had to be four inches away from his previous put down suspect marker, and he is, if you kind of you do that kind of angle. So he placed it, and with that, he scored another stake your claim for putting down a suspect marker in the enemy deployment zone for another one point. That's all he did. Back over to Joker's crew. So next up was Joker's henchman with the axe who was next to him here. He activated without audacity but within a of Joker. So he did a movement action all the way over to here and he placed a suspect marker outside of four of the one he was close to which in turn has triggered let them in on the joke. One friendly model with trickster trait which Joker gives all his henchmen trickster places a suspect marker within four of an enemy model. The rats are enemy models. When this happens, both players discard a card from their hand at random, so both hands lose a card, and that is two points for the Joker. Two quick activations to cover. Carlo Grotti activated without audacity, so all he could do was a movement, and he couldn't even quite get in cover, which is dangerous. And then in retort, Joker's bodyguard henchman, Thug6, I think, just did a move action. He could have technically placed a suspect marker, but he chose not to because it's too close to enemies, perhaps. So he just did a move, and he is there. So it's back over to the unknown crew, and all they have left is two rats. Hmm. So a rat activated, did a movement to get into base to base. Then Joker's dual wielding pistol person activated with audacity, moved, shot the rat that hadn't activated yet. So that is all the crew for Deathstroke's team activated. Joker and Mr. Hammer, both with Audacity, get to do whatever they want to take us to the midpoint of the game. So Mr. Hammer decided to change direction and move back here. He is creeping around the corner after Ratcatcher. Joker decided to stick with his henchmen. He didn't do anything else. There wasn't anyone to affect in range. But he's just waltzing around. And that does take us to the end of Battle Round 2, which also means that it doesn't look fresh and it uh, does score and Let's Dance does not. So at the top of turn 3 it will be Joker's crew going first and also we do have a Raise the Plan phase card being played. It's Joker's unique, it's showtime, a lot of text, gist of it is you roll a d3 and plus 2. So it was 3 plus 2 equaling 5 which is why the big 5 is next to him over there. That is how many enemy suspect markers within 18 inches you put into base to base with them. There was only 2 so those are now from behind that building. They're in base to base with Joker. Every activation after, in the turn that counter goes down. If when it reaches zero any of those objectives are still in base to base with Joker score the card for three. It's incredibly unlikely that's going to be stopped but that is in play as we go into the first activation for the penultimate turn. So Mr. Hammer got this turn sword. Oh, I'll also switch that die to a red one because it seems more climactic. So Mr. Hammer moved into base to base with Ratcatcher, swung with his hammer and did six blood, six stun, enough to just outright kill Ratcatcher. No objective card scored, but Ratcatcher is removed, which is pretty nasty. There's actually, what, only three miniatures? Well, three minis and one rat base left for Deathstroke's crew. 
Death Stroke activated with Audacity, he moved behind the drug addict Thug, used his katana, and did a massive 8 blood damage, which in turn triggered Dirty Job for making an enemy model, specifically a casualty. He has been splattered all over this alley, and is gone. So next up for Joker's crew was his large bodyguard henchman with Audacity, who did a move action, then swung his baseball bat into Carlo's head for 4 stun. It only does 1 stun per hit, but it's handy and heavy. But that is enough to actually knock out Carlo, so, or Carlos, whichever. So he isn't getting a turn, his audacity marker is gone, he's knocked out. It's kind of a relief to finally see someone get knocked unconscious in this game rather than just brutally murdered. He did not score any cards though, and with that over to Deathstroke's crew. Scarecrow activated with audacity, moved after the bodyguard, took swings at him with his scythe, managed to whiff quite badly, only one hit got through for two blood, putting the henchman at half health. So now it's over to either the axe wielding one, the dual pistols, uh, or Joker, I think. So the henchman that was next to Joker, also that should actually be a 1 now, but it's, it's going to score either way. The henchman that was here, activated, did a move action to get far enough away to place down a suspect marker, except it wasn't a suspect marker, it was a stinky fish. So that's going to be in play, there's no one that's going to stop it, it's a guaranteed score, but it is in play until the end of the round. So the Rat Swarm activated and tried to hurt the henchman over here and failed and in return he actually did manage to whiff because a 1 is always a fail so and his strength die is a 4 plus? 5 plus, 5 plus. He whiffed, embarrassing, but it doesn't matter because Showtime has now scored for Joker and Joker doesn't really want to do anything so he's just going to stay there, Deadshot can't do anything. So that actually does take us to the end of the round so the Stinky Fish also scores and it's not looking good in terms of number of models on the field for Deathstroke's crew, although they, they have scored more objectives, although those are worth less. We're going into the, the last turn, so let's see who's getting initiative. So as we go into the last turn, it will be Joker's crew going first. Carlo Grotti did not wake up, so he probably isn't getting a turn. And Joker's crew is playing Die Hard. So let's choose one of your miniatures that's not the boss. If they're not KO'd or casualtied, score. So it's in play. Mr. Hammer, who is not getting audacity this turn, and is just hiding behind there. He is getting that, so he's holding loot. He's worth five victory points at the end of this final turn, which is incredible. So with that, it's going to be a quick final turn. Let's get on with it. So it's a scramble for last minute points. The bodyguard henchman activated. He placed a suspect marker, which triggered let them in on the joke again. This is the second one for two victory points for having placed a new suspect marker within four of enemies, of which there were two. Then he did a move action over here into base to base with the enemy suspect marker and didn't do anything else. So now Scarecrow or Deathstroke have got to do something. Oh, or the rat pile. Who could forget the rat pile? So Scarecrow activated, he did a move right into base to base with the suspect marker that was just placed, revealed it and triggered Disturbance. For two victory points, reveal an enemy suspect marker. After revealing it, you must have more suspect markers in play than your opponent. 3 versus 2 again, so it scored. The henchman with the dual handguns activated and all he did was put down another stinky fish. All three of them got drawn, so no one's going to get to that. So it's a guaranteed score for the end of the round. And it just goes over to Deathstroke now to make a last ditch effort to score some final points. So we have actually found ourselves right at the end of the game now because the only things that matter have happened. Deathstroke put a suspect marker down just to try and even up the numbers to score at the end. Joker revealed one of the enemy suspect markers that had been drawn to him. The axe henchman killed the rats. Deathshot, Deadshot rather, did nothing but it doesn't matter and it does take us to the end of the game so that does mean that Scarecrow scores valuable commodities and Mr. Hammer scores Die Hard and valuable commodities. Add those cards to the pile and we'll be back in a second to see who has won. Okay, time to see who's won. Deathstroke slash unknown crew on the left, Joker on the right. So let's see. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Unlucky for some, thirteen. Two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 20. So a difference of 7. Gonna blame that on the stinky fish. Joker's crew has taken it. Despite the unknown crew getting off to an early lead and scoring a lot of objective cards, that's the thing with the neutral ones. They're only worth 1 and 2 for the most part. But yeah, Joker's crew take, took it. 
So as always, I sincerely hope you enjoyed this battle report and don't mind any hiccups with the new camera, just easing in, etc. Working out what works and what doesn't. I have a worry that all the zooming in and zooming out I've done is accompanied by that awful camcorder noise. We'll see. If it is, I'll try and do it less in the future. So there will be more Batman to come, along with everything else we cover here, but uh, there is also Gotham City Chronicles to check out if you want another Batman fix. And slowly building up the Batman Who Laughs crew as well. Sorry, team. They're not a crew. To see a new team for 3rd edition and how they do. I think it all centres around the Batman Who Laughs. It's all down to Well, we'll talk about that more once they're actually on the table. But yeah, very interesting. And he can take the best cards from Batman and Joker's objective decks, which is also incredibly potent. Ratcatcher didn't really get the chance to do much. But he scored early. He doesn't seem as useful in third edition just because his rats have a tough time keeping up with him and you don't want to waste audacity on them. Um, in terms of like Mr. Hammer, he scored big. He got one massive smack through on Ratcatcher. He has a role that makes it easier to hit him so, but didn't really apply. If Deathstroke managed to get over to him, he would have been taken down in a turn. I'm, I'm certain of it. But he was always surrounded by people who could defend him. And Deadshot being up on that building over there was also a massive hindrance to a lot of coverage on this side of the map, which let Joker's crew just kind of do what they want over here. I guess Ratcatcher could have fled through the Sir Graying as well, but who knows how that would have worked out. So anyway, thank you for watching. Please do remember to show your support if you want to see more, and until next time, it's time for now.